even back then was pretty cognizant of nutrition, pretty cognizant of eating a lot of protein. Um, even though there's like, there's some videos where I'm three 30 and I'm, I'm pretty bloated and pretty fat. Uh, there's also some videos and stuff like that of me, like at like 280, 290, and still having like some traceable uh, ab muscles going on. So, um, yeah, that took just like a lot of diligence, a lot of uh, a lot of time, a lot of eating. And I remember, you know, there was many days where I would eat basically pretty perfectly throughout the day uh, with just you know complex carbohydrates and proteins and stuff like that. Not too much worry about worry about the fats at that point because, you know, that's more of like a bodybuilding style of diet where you'd rein in the fats a little bit. And, but uh, what I would do is um, I'd basically just weigh myself, you know, weigh myself every day and just see like, is this trending upward? And if it wasn't, then I needed more food. And so that's where at night I could have a little bit more freedom with the food. I could have some pizza. I could have some fast food. I could have some ice cream. And it was kind of the the fun and the beauty of powerlifting is that it's it's not a uh, you know it's it, it's not you're not trying to uh, be a runway model you you got to be pretty big and thick to be able to lift the weights and uh, even the first powerlifting meet I ever went to I remember uh, this guy that I looked up to that was quite a bit older than me I was probably like uh, like 15 or something and this guy's probably 30 and uh, he was he was massive and he gets in the front seat of our car. And we're on our way to this power of the meet. He's like, all right, boys. He's like, I brought a whole thing of sticky buns. He's like, we got to get, we got to get through this uh, before we, uh, before we get to the competition. It was like, you know, a big ass thing of like, there was like, I don't know, eight sticky buns in there. And there's only <laughs> three of us. This make you feel terrible, but that's kind of like the, the, the fun part of powerlifting is you get to get to fluff up a little bit. I remember even thinking then I'm like, this is the sport for me. If you get to eat like this, this is kind of cool. Um, and then in terms of like actual supplements, like I'm a, I'm a fan of supplements. You know, I, I've been supplementing, uh, you know, magnesium and vitamin D and like all this stuff for many, many years. And then it, it kind of comes and goes. I'm like, I don't know, you know, vitamin D is a hormone. Maybe I should just go get it from the sun. So probably a lot like you guys, I experiment a lot and I try to figure out like what makes sense to me at the time. Um, I've always loved amino acids, so still to this day, I have uh, EAAs. Um, protein shakes, I've been having two protein shakes every day, um, probably pretty much since I was like 14 or 15, even when the protein shakes were gross. And then obviously, you know, in powerlifting and bodybuilding, it's it's kind of an interesting thing that no one really cares that much about the PEDs. It's, it's not like no one's pissed about it. <laughs> Uh, it's just like people just do their thing and they, uh, they show up to their competition and there are tested powerlifting federations and then there's untested powerlifting power, uh, federations. And the same thing is true with bodybuilding and, you know, the strongman guys that you see the pro strongman guys, um, that's an untested organization as well. And those guys are, you know, massive, they're six, eight and 400 pounds and, and so on. And so performance enhancing drugs, I mean, they work, they, they help a lot. I, I never really understood the, I, so I guess I do understand that if somebody is in a sport and the sport has testing for it and you're trying to pretend that you're, you know, natural, then that's kind of shitty, you know, because you're not, you're not like really playing under the same rules as everybody else. But if you're in powerlifting or bodybuilding, or even if you're, um, even if you're just someone on the internet, I don't really think it matters that much. Like if you're taking, I just, I don't, I don't take exception to it. I just think it's each individual's choice sort of on what they want to do. Um, I, I do think that it's not a great idea for people to lie, you know, for people, for someone like the liver King, like that particular situation of saying like, you know, he, he wasn't necessarily saying it, but he was alluding to the fact that he you know, sort of did this stuff naturally and that the liver and kidneys and stuff that he was eating was, uh, was giving him, you know, some of the results. So like that kind of stuff, that's not great. But in general, I think that performance enhancing drugs are just a technology, you know, just like chat GPT is a technology. We may as well get on board with it. We can get as mad as we want about Snapchat or Instagram or what's going on on social media. 
or we can, you know, just have our own interpretation of it and um, utilize it to our advantage. You know, the internet can be a weird and uh, dangerous place, um, but it's also great. Like I've made millions of dollars off the, off of, uh, you know, I don't know, you know, people are going to send me a, send me a check in the mail for a slingshot. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather do it the way we're doing it now with uh, Apple pay and all the other quick, easy, convenient things that we have. So, you know, just my main take on performance enhancing drugs is that they're, I think they're, I think they're amazing. And I think that they can be taken um, in reasonable ways to get people to places that they want to go to, just like really any other drug, whether it be alcohol, marijuana, what, really, no matter what the LSD or uh, mushrooms, you know, um, whatever the drug is, you're taking the drug because the drug can like transport you or get you somewhere that you otherwise sort of don't know how to get to. Like you can feel great and have a good time and be social without alcohol, right? But it's kind of more fun if you have alcohol. And then you're seeing more people now, they're trying to find like alternatives to alcohol and you got like kava and kratom and zin pouches and this and that. But even your pre-workout that you take, you know, you're trying to, you can go in the gym and work out and you could probably go out for a walk and get some sunlight and you could probably listen to some good music and get yourself hyped up for a workout. But it's nice to have it like a little can that you can just shoot down before you uh, go and do your training session. So, you know, anybody like looking into doing that kind of stuff, it's just, just do your research. There's so much information everywhere. There's a lot of great resources. Vigorous Steve is a guy that talks a lot about performance enhancing drugs and, and has a lot of um, just really like, incredible incredible information and there's there's a bunch of other guys out there so i think if you are ever, you know rather than like tell people don't take them they're not safe um if you are going to take them know what you're taking and also the last point i'll make on that is that um you know i didn't do anything until i was 25 25 is still pretty young but i would say like i don't i don't think it's for kids you know i don't think if you're 18 and you're you're like man i'm skinny i'm small like go get go get your gains you know go go train and eat your steak and drink your whole milk and kind of see see where some of those results get you for a little while because i think i think that foundation and the fundamentals i think are still really important you can't skip over them absolutely what when you got when you were in your peak of you know on gear you know moving the big weight what what did your stack look like and and I'm just curious and I, I, cause that had to be a huge part of, obviously you have your training, your nutrition, but to, to be moving, you know, 11 to 1080 on a squat, you know, obviously you, you, <laughs> yeah, you're, you're yeah. on some major gear as everyone else was. So I'm just curious, what did that look like? Yeah. You got to kind of, you know, it, it, same thing happens in bodybuilding too. Um, you, you got to just figure out a way to, uh, get a good amount of like drugs in your system. And unfortunately, you know, you're injecting stuff. And so um, that doesn't come without some pain, but we used to basically say that if it's not full, it's empty. And that was referring to the syringe. And there's three, uh, three mLs of, uh, of oil and steroids in there basically. But um, I utilized a lot of testosterone uh, over the years. I utilized testosterone in fairly high amounts. Um, I would say probably get close to like a gram of testosterone a week. And one of the weird things about steroids is that <clears throat> you can only get so much from each one. And so that's where the stacks come in. That's where people are like, oh, well, if I stack this with this, um, that will help a lot because then you're getting some, of, you're getting most of the benefits from something without as much of the negative side effects. Um, I've used Trenbolone, I've used Equipoise, I've used Deca. Um, and then there's oral steroids, there's Dianabol and Anadrol and all these different things. But I would say that, you know, uh, I would be on probably like two grams of stuff like per week. Um, it might be, you know, a thousand, it might be close to a thousand milligrams of test, it might be 500 or so of DECA or Equipoise, something like that. And it might be, there might be some orals thrown in there too, because why not? But uh, oral steroids are are really strong and they, um, they're really powerful. And unfortunately you could, 
the, the one of the issues with those is they're so powerful is that it makes it very easy to tear a muscle. Um, and, and the other steroids are powerful too, but the oral steroids are like, they just have like an instant impact on you. And I think you end up getting like too big and too strong, too fast. And like the rest of the body's not, not really ready for it. I also think there's probably some inflammation and stuff like that that goes on, especially when I was, when I look back at the way I was doing it. And the only really smart thing I did with that is like <clears throat> after competitions, I would come off of everything. I'd also um, get my nutrition uh, more on point and do like a keto diet, lose a bunch of weight and, and then sort of like rebuild from there. So that was actually pretty smart because I would get rid of a lot of that inflammation. But uh, yeah, main, the main stack was usually just uh, test, DECA and D-ball. 